the attachment would not ordinarily be there if I had said no, but instead I had played into it for the purposes of basically monetary gain. That is not the same as a person willingly participating. That is a person being strung along and a person being essentially lied to. I'm going to have the guests introduce themselves, so please tell us your name, age, location, and occupation. Go ahead. Uh, Jasmine, 26, Thousand Oaks, California, and I'm a stay-at-home girlfriend. Okay. And X what, though? Oh, yeah. Um, I used to be a stripper and scammer. Stripper and scammer. Yeah. Okay. What, so what is a, what's a scammer? Well, I just feel like when, because uh, stripping is like part of sex work, mm -hmm. and so when you're like scamming people, you're just telling them, you know, you're going to get something that you're not going to get. Because so like, I wouldn't bring down my like self morals. I mean, obviously, I didn't have the best morals at that time, but I wouldn't bring down my morals lower to um, get money. I would just rather lie to them. So, what would you lie about? Um, I honestly wouldn't ever say anything because when you work in a strip club, you can't say you're going to do explicit things. I would just kind of either like agree with whatever they were asking or just you know like yeah, we're gonna have fun, like you know. I wouldn't. Um, so what's the scam, though? They, yeah, they would think they were going to have sex or, like, sexual interactions with me that just weren't going to happen. So, because that's, like, why most men go to strip clubs. So they would. Yeah, so there's, um, this is often the case, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, many strippers engage in backroom prostitution. Is that correct? A thousand percent correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah a thousand percent correct. And there is coded language which is used between the club goers and the strippers. And I'm sure that you knew what that coded language was, right? And so when they would use the coded language, you would take them back and then that's when you would just not deliver. Pretty much. Um, they're honestly, a lot of like regular customers don't have a code of language. They just blatantly say, like, I want this. Like, mm -hmm. are you going to perform this, you know? Um, my managers knew that I would lie because they, they didn't care. I would make a lot of money um, for the club and for myself. So sometimes if they didn't like customers, you know, they've given them hard times, they'd send them my way and let me scam them. <laughs> And so, but I imagine, so the customers would give you money with the so, expectation of X. So they'd pay the club, like whatever the dance was to get like the private room. And then when we'd go in, I'd ask for my tip first. And then I would figure out how to entertain them for 15 minutes without doing what they want or anything really. But would they ever overtly request? Oh yeah. Yeah, they try. And you would agree? No. Oh. I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't do anything. So, but what's the scam then? That I'm getting their money for not doing anything they want. They are getting scammed into believing that they're going to get something met. Some, they're paying for something that but they're so not But so they getting. say, I want, a, I want a BJ. Yeah, and I'm just like, we're going to go back there and have fun. And it wouldn't happen. Is so when you, went, when you took them to the back room and they were under the impression that they were going to, let's say in this case, get a blowjob, let's say. Did they pay you up front for what they thought would be the sexual favor? Yeah, pretty much they would yeah. give me my tip. And then I would just like not do anything. And how much would you charge them for these uh, favors they thought they were going to get? Um, I honestly didn't charge. I would just like, if it looked like someone that was going to be difficult, I'd ask for like Bro. more um, they usually had like something that they'd offer like 200, like some girls are in there doing stuff for like $50. So you have to like really be, and it's usually those customers that would be aggressive. Like I've had customers push me into walls. Um, cause uh, again, like they do get mad. They go to like the manager and complain and, and at the end of the day, there's really nothing that they can do if, you know, I just hold my story like I didn't agree to anything I just said we're gonna have fun but I mean you seem to acknowledge yourself that there's a scam component here yeah but I wasn't gonna scam myself out of my own morals and like dignity of giving a stranger a blowjob or sexual favors so okay um were there, was there, aside from like what you were doing in the strip club, was there any other sort of scamming stuff? Yeah, I had a fake fiance for like two years. I met him at the strip club. 
what do you how did that play out um i worked at like a bigger club in la which is like a it's a um like topless bar so they have they serve alcohol and they have like cell sections and stuff I met him there, and he invited me to a Dodger game, so I said sure, and then we went on another date, and then from there on, he just, um, he knew he wasn't going to get sex out of me, because I was, at the time, abstinent, and so he just started spending a bunch of money thinking that he was going to get, eventually, sex out of me, and then he proposed to me on the third. Bigotted Ben donated $69. Q4 panel, what does dismantling whiteness mean to you, and how important is it? Well, I mean, <laughs> we're we're still in introductions. Maybe we'll uh, we'll we'll get back to this one bigoted bin. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to save it for later. Um, so wait, the fake fiance. So was he just like giving you money and stuff? Yeah, he was paying my rent. Um, I would, we would go out all the time, go shopping, go. Yeah, pretty much like anything I asked for money wise, I would make sure that like he gave it to me. Or sometimes even, like, I would send it to myself from his phone. And he had no real problem with that. Okay. And so how much a month do you think he was spending on you? Um, willingly, he was paying, like, $5,000 of my bills when I would just pay myself at that time. I was probably making, like, 15 ish like, 12 to 15 from doing that. From scamming in total like other dudes too no just him like just from him i would probably send myself like around ten thousand, like a month wait you said willingly willingly he was sending me my rent my bills what was he sending you unwillingly like we would go out and i would send myself money from his phone and at the end of the day he wouldn't care he'd be like okay like just make sure you spend it on something you like need to pay for but he knew that you were doing this uh most of the time he was like drunk so you'd open up his phone, go into your Venmo, cash app. Apple Pay. And you would just send yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was, yeah I was at a really low place in this time in life. <laughs> did you, you were in a low place? Um, yeah. And wait, so how old was this guy? 52. Okay, how old were you? Uh, I was, I met him when I was 23. Okay. So I you, stopped talking to him probably like last a little bit earlier this year and you but you've now become a christian um or? i've been a christian for a while i was just like super lukewarm mm-hmm. um because i was like dancing and trying to survive so um my means of like taking money from him was like i don't have to be at the strip club and deal with all of that so mm-hmm. yeah and so uh but now you're a bit more serious about your faith or well I got baptized last year and it's not more about being serious I think it's just the fact that not everyone is going to come to God like it's not easy to just leave that lifestyle behind because I started dancing when I was 20 so it's like you have to realize like that's like a long time of being involved in that lifestyle and getting used to it the fast money is like something really hard to let go of and wait so But now, do you regret some of the past, the scamming? Um, I feel bad for what I did to him, particularly, because I probably took over, like, $250,000 from him in the time that I was with him. Like, he paid for me to get um, plastic surgery, like, my breasts done, liposuction, and I wish I never got those procedures. Um, He also got me a car... In his name, like, yeah, I, I regret what I did to him personally, but at the same time, like, I was in a place where I was being very selfish. And okay. I don't regret it because I, I've learned that, like, a lot of those trials, like, I feel like God was bringing me through to be where I am now, to understand girls that were in my position or currently in God, w- just to be clear, God was bringing you through the liposuction and fake breasts and the that was a me thing that wasn't god that god didn't tell me to do that it was more of like a me thing because i was insecure and so any of this money that you accrued from him have you returned it's anything it's gone fast money is leaves you faster than it comes right but i mean you you look you say some of the money he willingly gave you no he didn't get anything back Huh? He didn't get anything. Right, but perhaps that might not necessarily 
be so subject to return, but I mean, the money that you essentially stole from him, or you said you'd go into his phone, Apple Pay, whatever, um, you spent that money, but you did take it from him. So for example, if you were to come into money of your own, mm -hmm. would you consider giving him back some money? Um, when we like ended whatever the relationship was, I like, he still was trying to give me money to like stick around. <laughs> God donated $69. Whoa. Don't blame me for this. Okay. Do you have a response to God? Um, <laughs> what do you mean? That guy. Don't blame me for this. No, that's not God. <laughs> okay. Um, you said towards the end of the, your relationship, mm -hmm. he was still trying to give you money? Yeah. Okay. Well... Putting that aside, even granting you that the money that he was willingly trying to give you was fine, you did admit to taking money from him unwillingly. Yeah, and he uh, knows that. Huh? He knows that. Like, he, he mm -hmm. realized everything, like, towards the end, and he was still like, I want you to be in my life. I want to get married. So. Metro Mac donated $69. What liposuction? It appears you don't just lie about your body count. I didn't even talk about my body count. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Um... Well, so perhaps he has forgiven you or accepted that you stole the money, but don't you feel some duty to just pay him back regardless? Honestly, the last conversation we had, um, I felt as if, like, because he was like, you should just stay with me and I'll give you, like, the life you deserve, the life you want. I very much felt like that was... Granted, uh, the enemy or like the devil, whatever you guys want to call it, trying to drag me back into that lifestyle because that was like the last thing I was holding on to from just being in that like area of life. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, back up. What? So, so let me get this right. You knew that you were never going to actually be with this person. You knew that you were uh, in a fake, affianced relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. And so you stole $250,000 from him. What Brian is looking for is he's looking to see if you hold any accountability for that. How much of that is your fault? Isn't it 100% your fault? Wasn't he a victim of you? In total, um, that's how much I got out of him. That's not how much I took from him. And so that's yes, like but, also but Hang on, hang on. If the entirety of the relationship from a person who you were falsely engaged to was done under false pretenses, then everything in which he spent and that you took under false pretenses would be theft. I think we can also... It's a fair point. Yeah, it is. It's a very fair point. Um, but I also think, like, if we look at it from another standpoint, when I was in that time of life, I was also looking at it as he's willingly spending all this money in the hopes of having sex with me. Because that was the end goal, to get well, married. Well, yeah, to you sex. told him that you wanted to be his wife. I didn't of tell him that. He, had, he proposed well, to me. And did you say yes? Throw me a Hold donated on. $69. Um. The IRS should have forensic accountants assigned to the watching of these uh, podcasts. Thank you, Hashtag Metro Matt, Brand for Gifted Five. Yo, JJ, appreciate it, man. Uh, uh, did you say yes? Did you accept the ring? Um, no, the ring was given to me like out of him. He had talked to somebody in like uh, uh, Columbia, and I like saw it in his phone, and I like fate got mad, and so he was like, "Here's a ring. Like, I want you to marry me." Because he had asked me drunkenly at a restaurant, and I was like, "Sure." You just spent like four thousand dollars taking me shopping. Yeah, if you want to marry me, okay. I didn't want to make cause a scene. But so you proposed to him. Yeah. And you said yes. Yeah. So then, okay, yeah. so okay, so so then, listen, <laughs> if you say. This guy, though, he just was spending money on me because he wanted to have sex with me. He proposed to you, and you said yes. If that is the case, isn't his expectation that everything he's spending on you or that you're spending on yourself is from what is to be his future bride? Why shouldn't he have the expectation of sex? That's, isn't that you being hyper-predatory? Yeah, I was. Yeah, so this is how could this not be 100% your fault? Because he was a willing participant. Like, there was a lot of times we'd break up. I'd tell him, like, straight up, like, I don't want to marry you. I, You met me at a strip club. Like, add this up in your head. Like, this is not real. And he would very, like, much just act completely to it. 
Thank you, JJ. Giovanni Jade, you donated $69. You say you're Christian. Then you are commanded by Christ to perform restitution. Return all your sinfully gained money or be anathema. You won't. Heretic Jezebel. Do you want to respond to Giovanni here? Um, I, you know, when someone's willingly still trying to participate in something that you've told them what it is and they know exactly what it is and they're still offering you money at that point, they're being a willing participant into it. Like, at that point, what do you, what do you do? Uh, well, so let me give a, let me give a slight response here because I think that this is kind of silly. Let us assume for a second that I um, were in, in some way taking advantage of a woman where this woman had a lot of cash, okay, and I was uh, telling her consistently that I wanted to be with her. I had even told her that I would marry her, and I was taking advantage of her over the span of multiple years. If that woman became highly attached to me, of course she would become highly attached to me, right? I had essentially been playing into this delusion for the point of, of monetary gain. That's what I had been doing, right? Mm -hmm. So the attachment would not ordinarily be there if I had said no, but instead I had played into it for the purposes of basically monetary gain. That is not the same as a person willingly participating. That is a person being strung along and a person being essentially lied to. Well, there was, like I said, many instances where I told him what it was, and he even, like, kind of figured it out a lot of the times, like, what it was. He just played dumb to it to continue, like, the relationship, whatever it was. He, at some point... Well, yeah, he had formed an attachment, right? So he had formed an attachment with you because you had told him that you wanted to marry him, right? So he formed this attachment with you, and he was doing everything he could to reconcile a relationship with his fiance. Like, of course, of course that's what he would do. Like, there wouldn't, doesn't that make sense? I mean, I, yeah, I guess I, I totally understand where you're coming from and it's not wrong what you're saying, but I mean, at the end well, of the then day. Well, then I still, then I don't understand how you're not, you, you're a hundred percent responsible for this situation. You made it yourself. Yeah, I was, I totally you, <laughs> played a part in it. I mean, I played a huge role in, in that I lied about a lot of stuff to him, but at the same time, it's like the times that I did come clean to him and I was like, look, I don't want to do this anymore. He had, you know, and I told him straight up what it was. I'm like, I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, but you're still, you. you're still using this caveat where after I had started to come clean to him, about the fact that these were mostly lies that I had told him this type of thing. At that point, the man had an attachment. He had an attachment which had formed around you based around your lies. And so of course he had, this attachment never would have existed though absent your lies. He's still being victimized. Even, even if he's trying to reconcile the relationship, he's still being victimized by even trying to reconcile it because he has an attachment which would not be there if not for your lies. Well, I he, you know, had multiple other women that he was, like, giving money to. So I don't see it completely as, like, I was, he has a problem. He ha deals with, like, well, alcoholism. Well, you know, it's really weird that suddenly he has over multiple women in other, that way. Okay, well, suddenly it's really weird. He didn't mention anything about other women that he was sending money to. I did. I said he now. was talking to someone in Columbia that I found out about. Okay. Well, the, the thing is, is I, I think that if... If you string a person along and you they become attached to you based around a set of lies, that even if they want to stay with you after they, they figure out that these are lies, in many ways they're still being victimized, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. So I, I just I don't see how the accountability here really just isn't on your shoulders, to be honest with you. Um I think that are you a Christian? Do you believe I am, God? yeah. Yeah. Well, I think. What then denomination you know, are you, by the way? Are you non-denominational? Well, I honestly don't know what like denominations are. I just know yeah, I have you, a really good relationship with. Yeah, them. did you? Hillary did you get Epstein baptized? donated sixty-nine dollars. Stop justifying your lies. <laughs> you took advantage of the man. You owe him the dollar back, Hillary and the IRS Epstein. should definitely look into this. Did you? Did you get baptized um, at the Saint Baptist by chance? No. I got, no. no, I don't know what a uh, denomination my church is. 
I just know it's like a Christian church. What's it called? Well, well yeah, okay. Don't, don't tell me what it's yeah, called, I, I guess. That. Never mind. I don't want you to dox yourself. I'm just, sometimes just by the name of the church, I can figure out the denominations why I ask. So uh, in, in any case, re, I guess regardless of your denomination, yes, I'm a Christian. I'm not exactly sure what, so then, uh, where you're going with so that. So my question was like, so you know that obviously this world is not made perfectly in God's image. And you know that we are tempted daily. And we, even the best Christians, we all sin. Even if it's not like a, as bad a sin as I was living in. But we all do. I'm sure you've sinned like at least three times this past week, and it's not something that you feel that you. I sinned three times today. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So. Well, what's? But I don't understand what the point is here. Okay, let me get to the point, please. Okay. So my thing is, is that yes, what I was doing was wrong, and I was not fully, I had not fully came to Christ and tried to live my life by Him yet. Um, I was still very much living for the world. I was still very much living by this like societal image of like I didn't like being called a city girl but obviously that lifestyle of like take it spend it I want to look like live this like luxury lifestyle that it's all over social media like I was 23 24 at the time and I was trying to just you know live my best life I wasn't living with Christ Yes, but do you, do you understand that the point of Christianity is the salvation of Jesus Christ due to his sacrifice for your sins? Yeah. And that it's through Jesus Christ from which you are saved. Your sins can be washed away, but the material stain that you leave behind on the world, you're still responsible for the things that you have done. Christianity is not a, a form of, of uh, salvation which then states that all wrongs that you've done now are also washed away. And I'm not In this saying... material world, the non-metaphysical world, right? You have wronged this person horribly. And that's why the, the chat is asking how you plan to compensate for that. Just saying that you have been saved, right? Is I, I don't understand how that somehow alleviates the burden of responsibility that you have. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we're also talking about like a too long, a two year long relationship I had with this man. Like I totaled a car due to him so that was like fifty thousand dollars of my own money like it was my car that i bought before i met him gone um wait how's that his fault he was drunk driving my car oh he was driving the car yeah i thought you said you totaled it well i took fault for it because i was i just wasn't gonna make him get a dui so you got the dui no i didn't get a dui but I, i wasn't drunk if do you like yeah so there's a lot of things um just okay yeah insurance didn't take care of it he hit parked cars. Okay. So, yeah, no. Car gone. Um, also got a car in his name, and it like he repoed it because he ended up not wanting to pay for it anymore. Like, there's a lot of things that I know that I got my karma, if you want to say, or just, like, the world gave me what I was owed in that relationship. Like, I don't sit here and think well, that karma, I'm, like, completely... Karma is a non-Christian value, just so you know. I know. I'm just saying for, like, people that... That way. Euler sees the pagan donated $200. Thank if you, this was gender reversed, the male would be vilified. Funny when it's the woman that does the victimization, it's still the man's fault for being a sap. 